exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. I'm Mr. Magazine. You have any idea what we're going to talk about today? Nope. All I can tell you is it's going to be exciting. Oh, I good. Can, I've, I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, um, let's hope so. Today's video is came about because of something or other I was reading in um, the Facebook group uh, that good friend of the channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter, uh, maintains. Definitely do check it out. Um, the Reselling Resource Center, I think it's called. Uh, f forgive me, it's a, it's, it's a bookmark on my computer. I never really look at it. I just type it up and it starts coming up. Yeah, the IRC. There you go. Yep. <laughs> but it came about because somebody in there was talking about how they uh, went to the post office and brought some stuff to the post office um, that they had printed the labels for, I believe. You know, 14 ounce items um, off of eBay. They printed mm -hmm. the labels, brought them there. Yeah. And they were told by the clerk, this can't go out first class. First class is only the 13, uh, 13 ounces and refused to accept them. And wow. the clerk is right in that if you go to the counter and purchase postage, you can only purchase it up to 13. But if you do it through eBay, you can go up to you know one pound. You can go up to 16 ounces. So 14, 15, and 16. You have to go priority if you're buying it at the window, I believe. When did this rule come? Uh, it's been around a while. If oh, you're buying at the window, all right. But the but if you purchase through eBay, you do get that advantage. Uh, and I believe it might also be at USPS.com. I don't believe you can ship 14, 15 ounces that way either. I um, think stamps and Amazon. Stamps, and Amazon, PayPal. eBay, PayPal, yeah. they all allow. Wow. It. Yeah. Weird. Yep. Um, hmm. And it was just I did comment to it, and I said it is kind of amazing how much. Any reseller that's been doing this for any period of time knows. And I'm not just talking about knowing what to buy, knowing what to price things at, knowing how to pack things. I'm talking about we know the media mail rules probably better than 75% <laughs> of the people at the uh, post office True, do. Yeah. We know the eBay rules probably better than 75% of the CSRs hired by eBay do. And you're in a situation where you need to explain to the various people, no, you're not reading your own rule right. Yeah. <laughs> or this is an exception because. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if you could think of any any places like that as well. I mean, just just the knowledge that we all have and, yeah. and what you know better than than people who should know it know it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about the media mail aspect because we know so many people that send it out, stuff out media mail that shouldn't go out media mail. And then, for example, the, some of the stuff I send out can go media mail. I bet they don't think it would be able to go out. Oh, definitely. You know, like the, those spe special edition Playboys, there's no advertising. I think Penthouse Hustler, they all have special editions with no advertising. I guarantee you if they open it up, they would reject it or say you owe postage you want it, not knowing that there's no advertising. It certainly can go media mail. It's similar to a book. Right. You get into, I mean, even you get into things like comic books, you know, you've got the Dell comics, which yeah. some didn't have advertising. <clears throat> Classics Illustrated definitely did not have advertising other than advertising for other issues of the mm -hmm. of their books, which is right. allowed. Um, you know, but then you get a Marvel comic. Well, that generally has it, except then you get into some of those. And trade certainly paper, trades. I'm sure they think they are comic books and they should... Only go first class. Well, the, yeah, you get into some of the comics from the 1980s, 1990s that didn't have any advertising in them because they were trying to do the better product and the better mm -hmm. paper and all that kind of stuff, and they didn't have any advertising. And how do you handle uh, the comic books on shipping? As far as how I ship them? Yeah. Like first class, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I do first class, sure. And there is valuable, obviously, priority. Right, Even though right. it's lighter, I'll still send a priority. Sure. And there are times where... Um, I actually do look at what it went for on Amazon, and if it legally can go media mail, I will send some of those comic books media mail. Because if it went for $5, yeah. and it's going to cost me, you know, I got $3.99 shipping, it's going to cost me four twenty three to send it, and it legally is allowed to go media mail. Oh, sure. I ship it out media mail, yeah. but then I'm looking at it going, you know, ah, geez, there's an ad on the back cover. I'll give you the perfect example. You get into some of the digests. I believe the Archie Digest have ads, mm -hmm. but some of the other companies' digests do not have ads. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So I like basically I look in the back cover is my first spot. And if I don't see an ad in the back cover, I look inside the front cover, right. inside the back cover, because that's where the advertisements are generally going to be. Yeah. And then I just do a quick page through and go, no, there's no advertisements in this one. This one can yeah. go out media mail. <clears throat> um, 
And, you know, they're so busy, they hardly check anything. And I'm not saying to do it, do it incorrectly or break the rules. But, you know, we ship out, say, 2,000 items a week. And if we're off six a week, three, we get, you know, we get money coming back because we did it in our favor. Or three, we owe money. It's like a washout. So, and how many are they really checking along the way? Is it certain branches like, you know, in Ohio or Texas? Oh, right. Where, this you is know, right. does Rochester not check any? But then you get to certain, you know, you know, cities that maybe they have a lot of issues and they will check it. So. It's a crapshoot. No, it's um, that's a really good point on that over there because you just you never do really know. And then I would hate to get into the argument because even though I'm right, it's not worth my time to argue. Right. If I sent two digests out and one I sent out media and one I sent out first class, and then the you know the the postal person said, "Why did this one go this way?" Because that one doesn't have advertising. You're allowed to open it up. You will not see advertising. This one does have it. You know, I do know the rules. Um, But I guess as you resell more, um, it just becomes amazing the amount of stuff that that we have to know and the number of hats that we have to wear. Um, You know, I'm, I'm sure that back in the day, back when we used to have to collect sales tax, I'm sure that I knew the sales tax rules better than a lot of accountants did as they pertained to, to secondhand selling because sure. that was what yeah. I did all the time. So I'm going to know the rules. I'm going to know the use tax rules. I'm going to know. Um, that is a problem that some people have. And in fact, it was a problem that, that you had at first when you first were shopping around for an accountant. We had to find an accountant who at least had a general idea about the reselling business right. because things like the inventory numbers and that sort of thing are not – the same as they are in a traditional brick and mortar because you're buying so many items at such a cheap price as opposed to if you're a corner store, you know, you the Cisco comes in, they bring the 40 boxes or the Goya right. comes in, they bring the 40 boxes. Yeah. There's 20 cans in each box. You can keep track of your inventory very easy. You know what it is that you bought. You know what it is you're selling. Right. You buy a mag, you know, you buy a banker's box. It could have 12 items in it, or it could have 200 items in it, depending on what it is you're buying. Or yeah. if you've got movie slicks, it could have a thousand of them oh, in there. Oh, jeez, for sure. You know, yeah. and it's difficult. So we have to know our side of things. And there are times where we have to explain it to the, quote, experts, unquote, because they may not know how things pertain to the reselling business. They may not know how things pertain to oh, it yeah. is what we do. So if you're out there and you're getting dissuaded just realize everything that you know, and when you're trying to find an attorney, when you're trying to find an accountant, uh, and so on, you probably know your business and the rules as far as reselling, uh, you know, better than the better than they do because they probably do not deal with it every day. Whereas it's it's your life, it's our life. So don't get dissuaded by it. Um, reach out to, to the people in the Facebook groups. Reach out to the experts around you. Reach out to the people that, that know what they're talking about on YouTube and get all the help that you can. Um, because just because your accountant says one thing or just because doesn't necessarily mean it's the gospel truth. Because, again, they don't regularly deal with this, whereas all of the different people that you, you run in into the reselling trade do. Doesn't mean that everybody does it right. But at least you get you you can hear a lot of different opinions, and then you can bring those to your accountant. I'll give you the perfect example. There are a lot of different ways that people account for their inventory. Some people expense it, some people carry inventory, and so on. And it's good to know the various options, so then you can bring it to your accountant and sit down and discuss what's best for you, um, and talk to people and ask them why they do it the way that they do it. And you end up having more knowledge in all these things than than. The people around you, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, although there are times when it's frustrating. Because <laughs> yes. how many times have you been on the phone with eBay <clears throat> with an issue, trying to explain to them why you're right Yesterday. because you <laughs> no, really because you followed the rules? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. So hopefully that helps you a little bit there. It's a somewhat of a pep talk that you know, just amazing all the hats we all have to wear. And uh, do hit the like button if you could. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.